Hello everybody, Little Bottom Eyes Logan here. We're about a week or two from the Switch 2's launch, but I want to do another video on my current favorite handheld, the GPD-1 Mini 7640U, and why I think Bazite is better than Windows for this application. Now, Bazite has so many pros to it, especially in a handheld form factor like this one, where Windows just doesn't cut it. Windows is built for desktops, Windows is built for laptops. Microsoft still has yet to release an actually decent interface for a handheld console. Hopefully that'll change when we get the supposed ROG Ally cross Xbox or whatever that is. But let's get into things. So starting off, we're going to get into the good of the system and the good of Bazite on it. So the first thing and most importantly for me is sleep mode. Because when I would run Windows, I'd have to turn off the system or I'd have to like close it and go into hibernate. It was just a mess. Sleep mode doesn't work on Windows. But with Bazite, you could just close the system, open it back up, enter your pin, and you're all good. So that is probably the biggest and best feature of having Bazite on a handheld like this, is sleep mode is such a lifesaver. The next feature I'd like to discuss and specifically why I'm playing a really old game like Deadpool, is the built-in upscaling. So this is running at 1280 by 720, 720p. And if you're familiar with the Steam Deck, you know that SteamOS and Bazite both have the option to use FSR1 or NIS upscaling. I'm not sure what they changed it to or why it's just called Sharp, but the image looks much better in person now. It is so much nicer to use the upscaling on games that don't support it. It also saves a ton of power. As opposed to if you just ran it at 10 AP, but you know, pros and cons. This is a little sharper and a little bit blurrier, but overall I will take it as it is much nicer than just running it at native 720p. But next up, we are going to discuss compatibility, specifically with the hardware. Now, as you can tell, every single one of my inputs are working. The keyboard, the mouse, the triggers, the analog sticks, R3, L3. Every single one of these buttons works, and I have had zero issue with them. I just booted up the system and went with it. You can also change dead zones for the analog sticks, which helps with an issue I will be talking about later regarding GPD software not exactly working on Bazite, but that's for later. Not to mention, it doesn't matter what handheld you have, as with the CSS loader, you can customize it to be whatever handheld you have, from AOK -okay to INEO to GPD, Lenovo, 1X Fly. It's all just super customizable, which is going into our next point, customizability of Bazite. Of course, you have your standard startup movies, keyboard controls, stuff like that, that is come standard with SteamOS slash Bazite. However, it doesn't stop with the movies. It's also, thanks to CSS Loader, the entire interface. Here's one that's really neat, a Pip Boy inspired CSS theme, which basically turns it to have the entire overlay, and it's very, if you're a Fallout fan, you'll love this. Me personally, it's a bit much, and I don't know if it drains the battery, but it did make the menus a little laggier for me, which was solved by an update. But me personally, I just like having a sort of cleaned up game view. I like changing the color icons as SteamOS is usually blue or green. I like changing mine to purple because purple is my favorite color and it's nice that I can go through and change the icons and all the sliders to be purple. Not only that is you can change the transition animations to see if it's better. And then the most interesting one that I never use because it's a little clunky, but you can have a 2004 classic Steam interface inspired. HUD, and it doesn't just end there. You can have different sounds. Like me personally, I have an Xbox 360 sound. It's just the sky's the limit with the customizability with the CSS loader. But finally, for the good, we are going to move in to the most important thing. It is just way less bloated. It does take about the same amount of storage as Windows. However, the games are more optimized and streamlined for this storage, and it is just a lot nicer. It seems like a lot less storage is being taken up by random Windows jank. And overall, this has been the good. But with the good, there comes the bad and the ugly. So let's move into the ugly. The first real ugly part of Bazite is fan controls. Now, it wasn't exactly great on Windows, but I couldn't figure out how to control the fan on Bazite until I just went around in the settings and messed with them. So if you're more of a casual gamer... 
then you're going to have a hard time finding them. They were under this funnily named Fantastic setting, but at least for, at the beginning, I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to change it, and it got super hot because I tried playing a game and the fan was wouldn't kick on. So just know it's under Fantastic. Finally, we have GPD Software Jank. So I was able to get this one to run, but I couldn't figure out what the options were, and it said device unknown, so I personally didn't mess with it because I'm not the most tech-savvy person, admittedly, and I didn't want to have to fix anything. I just messed up. This isn't an issue if you dual boot. Apparently, you can dual boot into Windows and then change the calibration settings and change the firmware settings, too, for the controller software, but... On Bazite, the controller software just wouldn't boot. I couldn't get it to load up for me. And this is an issue because if you had a trigger issue like I did where it wouldn't push down all the way, in some games you couldn't shoot, like a GTA 4. I tried and I tried to play that, but I couldn't do it because I had to calibrate the triggers. If it's just a stick dead zone issue, you can do that in Steam, but for the triggers, there's no known way to fix it on Bazite, so... Keep a lookout for that. I just, I couldn't figure out what to do. So your mileage may vary, but just know that GPD software is kind of jank on Linux as it was built for Windows first and foremost. With that being said, let's go into the bad. Now, I actually didn't have that many complaints. Uh, my first complaint was I thought the FPS lock was borked, but with an update they rolled out that fixed it. Thank goodness for the VRR screens actually working now with FPS lock. But the two main bad things you're going to see with Bazite, SteamOS, or any Linux distro based on SteamOS is that game compatibility and support is limited unless it is SteamOS or built for the system itself. What I mean by that is a lot of these online multiplayer games use stuff such as Easy Any Cheat or Battle Eye, so games like Apex Legends, Fall Guys, Fortnite. Rainbow Six Siege. These are all unplayable. I would recommend staying away from Bazite if you are a FGC player, a fighting game community player, a first-person shooter guy as Black Ops and PUBG isn't going to work. Same thing with Destiny. Or you just only play multiplayer stuff. The Bazite is built for single player, in my opinion, as most online multiplayer games aren't going to run very well. Nor would I really want to play something like Marvel Rivals on a Steam Deck. It doesn't seem like a very good experience. So, to put a nice clean bow on everything, here is the good, the ugly, and the bad. Of course, the good, sleep mode, hardware compatibility, built-in upscaling, less bloat, and customizability. Lag in menus, fan controls being obscured and a little hard to navigate, and GPD software not working. And finally, for the bad, game compatibility specifically with multiplayer games. OS support is limited just by the fact that it is a fan-made distro of Linux, so it doesn't have a full, like, paid team, 100% bug fixing for all these handhelds. And then sometimes you'll get a random crash or two in games, and then it'll break, but you'll have to fix it. It's not replicatable from what I've tried, but I have had some issues. Overall, I believe Bazite is way better than Windows. So, that is why I believe Bazite is the best... OS to run on your handheld system, whether that's the GPD Win Mini, the GPD Win 4, Asus ROG Ally, the Lenovo Legion Go, AOK, Aya Neo. Bazite has stepped in and has done what Microsoft hasn't. Granted, that is with an asterisk. If you play a lot of multiplayer games, then I would avoid Bazite. But if you're like me, play a lot of single player stuff, at this point in time, Bazite has gotten so many updates and so much Proton compatibility, I haven't had an issue running anything I've thrown at it. Even games that are unsupported work with Proton GE, which you can just get through the Discovery Store on Bazite's desktop. Overall, highly recommended, and thank you for checking out today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Lobotomized Logan, out.